Hello, IB Environmental students. Today we're going to be doing topic 2.1, species and populations. Let's start by defining ecology, which is the study of the interrelationships between living and non-living um, things, which we know is called biotic and abiotic. Do know that you must know the difference between a scientific name, which uses binomial naming system, all right, which we would always put stuff in italics. Oops, this one's supposed to be in italics, and so is this, where the first word is uppercase and the second word is lowercase All right just a friendly reminder but that's what ecology is and we do have to be able to know the difference between a habitat and a niche alright a habitat is where the species lives and niche is the responsibilities or the interactions just know the difference if you need to write down an example to know the difference go for it if these are terms you already think you know you can skip them so we do um, have to focus on what a species really is and it's a living thing right but specifically a species refers to a group of organisms that can interbreed all right sometimes I'll abbreviate organisms ORGS you're welcome to do that so you don't have to write them a ton of times but they have to be able to produce fertile offspring and that's going to be really important to what we talk about later when we talk about biodiversity because if the organisms can't produce more offspring or more babies they're going to really struggle as a species. And the population is the group of the organisms of that species, but they have to be living in the same habitat at the same time. So they're all able to interbreed. So that would be a lot of these, all right? Next, we're going to be talking about within these species. Sometimes the species will interact with one another, but that'll be two different species interacting. And we call that a close relationship of living things Together is what sim means, bio meaning life, things living closely together. All right, these are things you might remember from biology class back in the day. So um, the first one is when two different species might be competing with one another. Um, this is an abbreviation for populations. I highly recommend it. So um, they can be within or between two different species. So intraspecific is the same species, all right? So finding mates for food, they might be fighting, all right? Or um, if they're looking for food. So that could cause two organisms within the same species and population to fight with one another. There's also interspecific, which is different species. They might compete, such as these um, barnacles, right, on this um, on this rock. They're competing for space, but they're also competing based on how the different abiotic things are affecting them. So because this blue one does better both in the water and outside the water, it is out-competing and excluding the other species. And that's called competitive exclusion. They're out-competing one another. And that might cause them to have different habitats than they might have originally if both species weren't there. So do try to do your best to distinguish between these two types. The next one is mutualism. Mutual meaning they get along. Both species benefit. Now here's some examples, but both of the examples are things getting along. We have a pollinator and um, getting nectar or pollen with a plant. They're both benefiting. Here we have lichen, which is a mutualistic relationship between a, a fungus and algae on um, a tree. And it's really healthy that the fact that these are living there. Next is commensalism. Commensalism is when one species benefits but the other one doesn't care. It's neither harmed nor benefited. Our best example is these barnacles living on the whale. The whale doesn't care that the barnacles are there, but the barnacles are getting a free ride and they're getting food out of it, which is great for the barnacles. But the whale, he doesn't care. He doesn't care a little bit. Not even a little bit. Next is parasitism. Yuck! So parasitism is when um, one organism benefits, all right, that's the parasite, and the other organism is being harmed. But just notice that it's not supposed to kill the other organism. The parasite would prefer to be able to come back again and again to be able to get whatever it's getting from the host. So here we have ticks and we have fleas, but mosquitoes are also good examples. There's parasitic worms, so that's what a parasite is. And next we have predation. When it's animals, that's usually what we refer to. That's really going to refer to something actually dying compared to what when we had a parasite. 
and we know that predator-prey relationships are really good examples of negative feedback loops. We also have herbivory, which is where a animal is eating a green plant. So it's not necessarily killing the plant, but because it's eating it, we kind of lump these in a similar relationship. But here, really things are dying. So don't forget, predator-prey is a negative feedback loop. If you're going to forget, make sure you draw it in. Right? It's stable equilibrium. <coughs> now that we've talked about how some species and populations have some relationships with one another, let's learn about the characteristics of a particular population and how it might change over time. So populations have a size. That's how many individuals are in the population. They have a density. That's how much um, individuals are in a particular space. We can look at how the different ages are within a population. Maybe there's more adults than there are babies. We can also look at how spread out they are. Are they in clumps? Are they equally spaced out with one another? Those are characteristics we can use to describe populations. Not only that, populations cannot grow forever. So we do have to talk about how populations are limited in size. We could talk about this with humans. We could talk about it with plants. We could talk about it with other animals. So we call this limit to population growth, we call that carrying capacity. Oftentimes it's, term, it's called K. You might remember from biology. It is where we have this leveling out. It's the number of individuals of a given population which can be sustained indefinitely over time right? It's definitely specific to a space and a species. It is established by things called limiting factors. Limiting factors can be food, space, water, soil, nutrients, sunlight, predators. So those are all things that might keep the population in check. Think predator-prey relationships. That's a negative feedback loop. Stable equilibrium. This is steady state stable equilibrium. But in reality, Especially humans are seen to be in a different type of growth curve that seems like it's about to go on forever versus this one that stables out like carrying capacity. So we have to have these names for this. This one that goes almost forever is in the shape of a J, so we call it a J curve, also known as exponential growth if you think about math class. This is one that starts slow, but it begins to progress really, really fast and faster and faster and faster. That's why we call it exponential. Unfortunately, this is a scenario that doesn't usually make sense because it's based on that there's no resource limitations, which we know on our Earth, which is a closed system, it is very much a place with limiting resources. Logistic growth curve, the S curve, which is about its shape, which is the shape of an S, actually has carrying capacity. After that exponential growth spot, it starts to slow down, and eventually, it wiggles around, around carrying capacity, that maximum number of individuals that can fit in the area, because that is based on limited resources. Don't forget the definition on carrying capacity, but if you already wrote it down, don't need to write it again. So why is carrying capacity so interesting? Well, carrying capacity is pretty complex. We as humans may be overshooting carrying capacity, meaning going over it. Not only that, different species may be overproducing or taking over a particular space such as an invasive species. They would also be overshooting carrying capacity and maybe overusing resources. And that's pretty bad. That can either hurt those resources, whether they're preys, or they might be um, overusing fuels like us, and that can eventually cause a dieback for multiple reasons. The area between the S curve, which is this one that about carrying capacity, and the J curve, the one that goes straight up, that area in between, if we were to color it in right here, right in between the S and the J curve, we call that the environmental resistance. Carrying capacity is not fixed since it can be affected by seasonal changes, natural, and human catastrophes. Think about a hurricane that might have caused a flood. It's a lot less people that can be in that area because the resources aren't really easily used. Same thing for the animals and plants in the area. So it's going to change depending on the abiotic and biotic factors in the area. Those are going to change by seasons, natural, and human main causes. Don't forget, it also could be affected by humans deciding to immigrate and emigrate. The end. You made it. Wonderful job.